Hello everyone, this is Gary Tonnenkort from morethanasnapshot.com. Today I wanted to show you an easy way to make a slideshow using Adobe Photoshop. Of course you can do this in Lightroom, but Photoshop may give you some extra controls. So the first thing I would do is, you know, if you have your images in Lightroom, I would export them at a smaller size so you have less resizing to do in Lightroom. I mean, I'm sorry, less resizing to do in Photoshop. So I'll just go to File, Export, and I will create a preset that will export a file that is 1920 by 1080, which is a standard uh, HD size. So it's good if you're going to present your slideshow on a TV or uh, even projected. So by resizing all of the photos in, a, in that smaller size, it'll make it much easier for them to um, be correctly sized when we put them into into the Photoshop. I've already exported a bunch of files so we can move on. Now that we're in Photoshop, the first thing I want to do is to open one of these files that I've exported. So I'm going to go to File, Open, and I'm going to go and find those pictures. Okay, so here I have a folder of all the pictures that I want to put in the slideshow. Right now I just need to open up one of them in order to make a slideshow, we need to have a timeline. So to get the timeline for working with videos, or in this case, a slideshow, we need to go to Window, and then come down to Timeline. Click on Timeline, and that will give us this timeline right here. This is what we're going to use to make the video. So all I have to do is click on Create New Video Timeline. And you can see it puts that first picture in our timeline. And now I just need to add all of the rest of the pictures. So I'm going to click on this little film strip right here and go to Add Media. Okay, so now I can just click on the first image and then shift click on the last image and then click Open. And it will automatically add all of those pictures to my timeline. And you can see them here on the right side as layers. All right, now if I wanted to see this a little bit larger, there's a little slider down here that will expand and show me a little bit larger view of these little thumbnails. Now I can go through the pictures and uh, see if I want all those pictures if, or if I want to reorder the pictures. Let's say I would prefer to have this picture come in first. All I have to do is click it and drag it to wherever I want. So I can quickly reorder the pictures just by clicking and dragging them. Now, if there was a picture that I don't want to have in the show, I can just click on that picture and press delete, and now it's gone. Also, if I want one picture to play a little bit longer, I can put my little cursor right on the edge of that file and then just click and drag it, and it'll make that picture play a little bit longer. And if I wanted another picture to play a little bit shorter, I can just click and drag and make that one shorter. Now here we have a little uh, playhead and I can scrub through the pictures and just check out to see the size of them to make sure that the sizing looks correct. Now one thing you'll notice is there is uh, a border on some of the pictures because not all of the pictures were cropped to 1920 by 1080 so sometimes they'll have this empty space on the sides. So we can take care of that by adding a black background. So all I have to do is go over to the right side. You can see all of these pictures are in group one, video group one. So I'm going to just close video group one by clicking on the little arrow. And then I'm going to come down and click new layer. And that's going to add a new layer above video group one. But I don't want it to be above video group one. I want it to be below. So I'm going to click on the new layer and drag it below video group one. Next thing I'm going to do is come over to edit and then come down to fill. And I'm going to choose black as the background color. Normal mode, 100% opacity and say OK. And you'll notice what that did was it put in a black background. Now it put in the black background sort of in the middle here of everything that I was doing. So I need to make sure that I stretch it out to cover the whole timeline. So I'm going to click at the beginning and drag it all the way to the beginning. 
and then click on the end and drag it all the way to the end of all of my images. That way I'll have bl a black background for all of my images. All right, so now you can see if I jump down to here with the playhead, everything will ha have a black background. Now that that is all in place, we can add music. So right down here it says audio track. I'm going to click the little arrow and go to add audio. And then I'm going to go to the folder in my computer that has audio. All right, so navigate to my music folder and then find the music file that I want to use. Click on it and say open. And you can see here it's going to add the music file down at the bottom. And you'll notice that the music goes way past uh, my pictures. So I just simply need to make this little uh, zoom control button a little smaller to make this a little easier. And then I'm going to click the music uh, bar and drag it shorter. I'm not going to come all the way to the end. I'm going to give, I'll let the music play a little bit longer than the slideshow. Also, since I'm working on the music, I can click this little arrow at the end of the music bar and it gives me some options here. Like I can fade the music in and I can take, let's say, about 1.62 seconds to fade it in and I'll do about two seconds maybe two and a half seconds or so to fade out the music okay once that's set I can just test out the music for a second okay it's working fine now I'm gonna zoom back out on my timeline so I can see the pictures a little bit better the next thing you probably want to do is to add transitions for between one slide and another. So right near the playhead at the beginning, there's a little half box, half black, half white. If I click on that, it shows me some different transitions that I can apply and a one second duration for the transition to be applied. So in this case, I think I'm just going to add um, a crossfade just click on crossfade and drag it in between the two images and then you can see if I play this they crossfade from one image to the next you'll also see that it seems to have made the timeline a little bit shorter then I'll come over here and I'll add another one this one I'll go fade to black and drop it right in between and then take a look now it dips to black before it transitions so I can add a transition between every single image and I can also add effects to the images themselves so let's say on this second image I'll start it back here at the beginning I want the image to pan so right to the right there's a little arrow if I click on that, it says no motion and it says resize to fill canvas. So if I click on no motion, I can choose pan and zoom, pan, zoom, rotate, or rotate and zoom. So this will give me quick, easy animations of my images and it will automatically resize the image to make the effect work. So in this case, I want it to pan. When I click pan, it gives me this little um, option to pick an angle for what direction I want it to pan. Let's say I want it to pan in that direction. I believe this will go to the right. So once you've selected that, you can just click off and then test it out. So here you can see that my image is panning to the right. Now the video hasn't rendered, so you can see that the the motion was a little bit slow and choppy. When this actually renders into a video, it'll be nice and smooth and uh, you won't you won't have that kind of problem on this image let's try something a little bit different I'd like to zoom into this part since it's got some interesting raindrops so I'll click the little arrow again and this time I'll click zoom and I want it to zoom in and I want it to come down to the bottom center so I choose bottom center here on this little grid and then click off and we'll start it from the beginning here you can see it's zooming into the bottom center of this image 
Okay, so I can I could add one of these effects to every single image, or I could leave some images with no effects. All right, so as I go through the whole show, I can set up all of my transitions and all of my effects. And then when it's all done, I'll show you the finished product in the next video. All right, so again, this has been Gary Honecourt from morethanasnapshot.com. And I hope this helps you make great slideshows. Also, stay tuned for part two. I'm going to show you how you can enhance this even further, maybe with some text and by adding in video.